Adding controller support to your game or Python program can help add a real sense of polish. Although workarounds such as Joydeki have always existed, I'll show you how you can add native PS4 controller support to your current project. The DualShock 4 has two specific types of controller inputs we'll be focusing on, buttons and analog. Buttons are the simpler cases they only have two states, they're either being pressed or they're not. Each button has an associated number key, so all we'd have to do is check if the button at the specified key is being pressed or not. Pygame will essentially handle button inputs the same way it handles inputs from your keyboard. Analog controls are a little trickier, it not only matters if they're pressed, but how much they're pressed as well. Pygame separates the vertical and horizontal movement of the analog stick, and then measures the direction on a scale between negative 1 and 1. So using the horizontal direction as an example, negative 1 would be holding the stick all the way to the left, 0 would be in the middle, and 1 would be all the way to the right. Any value in between would be somewhat left or somewhat right. The back two triggers are also analog buttons, but their scale working slightly different. Negative 1 means the trigger is not being pressed at all, and 1 means it is pressed all the way. So slowly squeezing the trigger will increase the analog measurement until it maxes out at 1. Now that we have a basic understanding of the controller, let's take a look at how we can read its inputs in Pygame. For testing purposes, we'll be using the simple program that allows me to move this cube with the directional pad or analog sticks, and then adjust the color using the left and right triggers. If you'd like to follow along, everything I do will be linked to in the description, so feel free to check it out. We're going to start by initializing our controller. This should be done right before the main game loop. Let's go ahead and make an empty list called joysticks. Then we're going to use the getCount function from Pygame to see how many controllers the computer currently recognizes. Go ahead and append those to our joysticks list. Now that we have our list of joystick objects, which is our controllers, let's go ahead and initialize all of them. To do that, we can just iterate through our joystick list and call the init function from joystick. With this step done, Pygame will now be able to read inputs from our controller. Now let's go ahead and make a dictionary that will map the specified button keys to a PS4 controller. I've done all the mappings in this .json file that you can download from the description. You can either download it and read it in like I'm going to, or you can pause the video and enter them in manually. It's up to you. With the OS and JSON modules imported, we can go ahead and load the file by using the json.load function. Since this dictionary contains all of my non-analog inputs, I'm going to go ahead and call it button keys. Now let's go ahead and make another dictionary to hold all of our analog keys. This time we aren't going to use strings as keys, but we're going to use the integers from 0 to 5. In the comments you can see what each integer is assigned to. Now let's go ahead and scroll down to our event handler. Inside our for loop, we're going to want to check for a new event type, which is going to be called pygame.joyButtonDown. This will look for any buttons being pressed down on our controller, so all we have to do is check the button property of the event and see if it matches up with what we're looking for in our dictionary. If that's the case, then you can put in your game logic as what to do. In this case, I just set a left flag equal to true, and then later on, the player will move to the left 5 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on all the other buttons for my directional pad, which includes right, down, and up. Now we can go ahead and look for another event type, which is going to be button releases. We can check for these using pygame.joyButtonUp. We do everything here pretty much the same way, the only difference is going to be rather than setting the flags to true, I'm going to set the left, right, down, and up flags to false. The same process could be done for any of the action buttons on the DualShock 4 controller. You would just check to see if it's being pressed or released, and then handle your game logic accordingly. That's it for buttons, now let's go ahead and see how we'd handle analog motion. For analog, the event type we're going to want to be checking for is going to be pygame.joyAxisMotion. If any motion is detected, we're going to want to set the value of that motion to the corresponding key in our analog dictionary. We can populate our dictionary by using the axis and value properties of our event. In layman's terms, what this will do is just go through all of our analog sticks and triggers and see how far they're being pushed and in what direction. Something to note is that the analog on the PS4 controller is actually incredibly sensitive. If you want to see how sensitive, what I recommend you do is print your analog keys dictionary and it'll show you all the values. You can play around with the sticks and triggers while the event loop is running and you'll be able to see how precise they actually are. So now let's go ahead and write some code to make our cube move left or right based off the left analog stick. We'll start by looking at the analog stick's horizontal component, and this can be accessed by using the zero key in our dictionary. The method I have here is meant to make the analog sticks act similar to the directional pad. I had mentioned earlier that the analog sticks are really sensitive, so the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure the stick has been pushed a certain threshold before we register its movement. In this case, I use 0.4, which is a little bit less than half. The absolute value makes sure to capture movement from both the left and the right side. Now I'm going to set a second threshold a little bit farther away. In this case, it's going to be 0.7 on both sides. If we're able to make it past the second threshold, then we'll set our flag equal to true. And if we're caught in between the two thresholds, then we'll set our flag equal to false. The movement in our analog stick is continually updated. 
So if the player pushes far enough left or right, one of these if statements will run. And then when they let go, what's gonna happen is that the value is gonna fall between 0.4 and 0.7. So one of these else statements is gonna run and it's gonna set the flag back equal to false. Now we can do the same exact thing for the vertical movement. The only difference here is that when we access our analog keys dictionary, we're going to use one as our key instead of zero, as this one corresponds with the vertical movement in our left analog stick. Once again, this method kind of takes away the analog function of our sticks, but if you wanted to utilize the analog function, what you could do is go down into your player logic and use the analog keys value as some kind of multiplier. So that way, if you press the stick slightly, the character will move slightly, and if you push it all the way, your character will gain speed. There's a lot of different ways you can handle controls, so it's really up to the game or program that you're making. And the last thing we're going to do here is check to see our triggers. So we're going to use keys 4 and 5 in our analog keys dictionary and see what their values are, and then we'll set a threshold equal to 0. Remember that they go from negative 1 to 1. So if they're greater than zero, that means the trigger has been pushed in more than halfway, and we'll do our logic here. In this case, I'm just increasing or decreasing a color variable. Everything should be good to go, so let's go ahead and run our program, and let's see how it works. First thing we'll do is make sure the analog sticks are working. Everything looks good here. Now we'll check the directional pad and make sure all four buttons can move the square. Looks like we don't have any problems here as well. And then finally, let's check on our triggers and make sure they can change the color. By pressing the triggers, I'm able to change the square's shade of blue, so everything looks like it's working. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Not gonna lie, I got a real kick out of being able to play my little game with an extra controller, so here's hoping you'll feel the same way. If you decide to play around with the controller settings and end up doing something cool, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And if you learned something new, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. We're pretty close to 100 subscribers, so that's a cool little milestone I honestly never thought I'd reach. Hope you all stay safe and take care.